How about when you have something that's published by a company or by the government? Again, that's something special, isn't it? Because there's not going to be any author and there probably won't be any editor. So let's look at this example. U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, National Institute of Health, National Heart, and, National Heart Lung and Blood Institute, 2003. So what is this here? This whole thing all the way to the end where the period is, that's the author of this. That's the person who wrote this. But in this case, that's not a person, is it? It's an organization. It's part of the U.S. government. But we don't just write U.S. government because that's so huge. We write the specific department that wrote this report. And that department's name is this name here. U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, National Institute of Health, National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. This was published in 2003. It's the title of the overall report is called Managing Asthma, a Guide for Schools. And this is the NIH publication number. So if you have some numbers or more information, you can add that. And then here we have its URL where we retrieved it from on the internet. Another one that's quite popular is the conference paper or the conference abstract. Now, if you're using something like Google Scholar, you can actually find conference papers and conference abstracts. You can go to websites for conferences and find their abstracts. And maybe you find some information in an abstract that's interesting to you, interesting and useful for your research, but it's not a really a paper. So how would we cite that? Or how would we write that in our reference list? Well, in our reference list, we would go ahead and of course we'd have the author, last name, first name, then we have the year of the conference and the month of the conference because, of course, conferences are going to be at some time. Then we go ahead and we have the name of the paper or the abstract that's being presented. Defending against business crises with the help of intelligent agent enterprise information system. Oh, whoops, I missed one there. Based early warning solutions. Yeah, there we go. So right from here, here. So that is capital D at the beginning, and then the rest of the letters are all lowercase. Now then, here I go ahead and write down paper presented at the 7th International Conference on Enterprise Information Systems. So this is the name of the conference. That is going to use capital letters at the beginning of each word because that's the name of the conference, just like the name of the book. Then we have a comma and the location, Miami, comma, Florida, because that's a state. Abstract, retrieved from, and then here's the URL. And that period there, that's kind of the ending there, but then here we add this, where did you get it from? How can the reader find it online? What if it's not online? What if it's inside of a book? Now, lots of conferences do actually publish their proceedings in books. So you can go ahead and get that book in the library, or you may find that book at another library. So what can you do? Very, very similar. So here we have the authors. We have these three authors. Here is the date. Here is the name of the paper that was presented. And that goes all the way down to here, cameras. And then we say in, because it's inside of a book. And then here we have the editors. First name, J. Last name, blank Talon. First name, W. Last name, Phillips. First name, D. Last name, Pope Posuku. Ampersand, first name, P. Last name, Shenyuders. And then here, EDS, editors, period. And then the name of the actual conference. Lecture notes in computer science. Now, this, this Probably it was the name of the conference, but for sure it should be the name of the book that's been put together. Advanced Concepts for Intelligent System. So this is, well, wait a minute. This is lecture, lecture notes. Yeah, I'm sorry. Got this wrong. Lecture Notes in Computer Science, Volume uh, 4678, Advanced Concepts for Intelligent Systems. So 
This is part of a larger book, and the larger book is called Advanced Concepts in Intelligent Systems. So we have the smaller piece, and then the larger piece, and then the page number for that. And then we have a DO, DOI. Okay, it's so easy for me to get confused. It took me literally weeks to get these examples together, and I still get confused by them. So of course, it's really great to have something like Zotero or EndNote helping you. Again, I highly recommend Zotero. But even when you do that, for these kinds of references, you got to double check because the software very much has a hard time getting this right. Plus, look at these examples we just did. These proceedings and editors or no editors or online and maybe in print. It is so overly confusing. How do you get that information into your EndNote or into your Zotero program that's helping you do those references? My experience is it goes in almost always wrong for these complex ones. They don't have the conference name right or the conference name is in the chapter section. And then the conference proceedings is in the title of the article section instead of in the, instead of in the overall conference name section. They get the names mixed up or they get the editor name reversed with the author name. That is always happening when I import it. So I always have to go back and look one by one by hand. Usually I try to do that when I import. I double check rather than wait until the end because remember, if you wait until the end of your research to check this stuff, it's going to be very hard. At the end is when your professor is telling you, make changes to the statistics, make changes to these tables, change your results, go back and recheck your data, change your conclusions. Those are all things that you're changing the last minute. You do not have time to then check through all your references. That's the last thing you're going to be doing. You won't want to do that. So when do you check? when you import. When you get the papers the first time, that first day, that first minute, you bring it in, you put it into your system, you use your EndNote or you use your Zotero, and then you double check right there and then. That saves your time later. That makes you more efficient. What if you want to cite a doctoral dissertation or a master thesis which is at a library somewhere? This is very common. You can do this. Now, of course, probably your professor will not encourage you to do this. You won't want to do this too much, but it is something you could do. So how would you cite that? Well, it's not that different. Here we have the author, the last name, and then the first name, the middle name. We have the year of the dissertation. We have the title of the dissertation here. And then we go ahead and we use parentheses and say doctoral dissertation or master thesis. And then we have a period because that's basically the end. But then we add the bit of the URL saying where did we get it from? The name of the database. Now usually these will not have a URL, will they? Because usually the thesis is inside or dissertation is inside of a library and you cannot access it unless you're a member of the library or a member of another library that has access to that library. But in any case, you can list the name of the database or the library and the number. Usually they will have a number to access inside the library. Here's another example of an unpublished dissertation or thesis. So we have the author and then the first name, uh, middle name, the date. Here is the title of the dissertation or thesis. And here we actually say unpublished doctoral dissertation or master thesis. And then we have the name of the school and the location. So a little bit different, but basically the same. And here's another example. Let me clear this so we can see it clearly. There we go. So we have the last name, first name, middle name, and here is the name of the dissertation. And then we go ahead, our thesis, and here we say master thesis. And this I got on ProQuest Dissertations Database. It's actually called ProQuest Dissertations and Theses Database, and here is the access number for that. That database has its own numbering system, so very helpful.
Here's another example. Adams, R.J., 1973, Building a Foundation for Evaluation of Instructions in Higher Education and Continuing Education. This is a doctoral dissertation, and it is retrieved from this link here. That's a little bit unusual that it would be on an open internet link, and it's not inside of a regular database. So that's kind of the difference between published and unpublished is that sometimes it's just sitting in a library or it's just online somewhere, but at other times it's inside a formal database, meaning it's published. That doesn't mean it's published like published in a journal, but it's inside a database published from a library that submitted it up. Usually if you're at a regular school, that would happen and it would be then accessible to other researchers, which is a really great thing. Here we have another example, and we have the last name, first name, then we have the year, and then we have the name of the doctoral thesis, and then here we say doctoral thesis, and here we have the school it's from, Royal Institute of Technology, Stockholm, Sweden, and here is where it was retrieved from, so the URL, and then inside the URL is an actual number, which is for the database to look up that specific thesis.